This was a mountain region lush with plant life. Several thousand old medicines could be seen everywhere. There was a stone mountain with ancient vines coiling about it. On the mountaintop was a vicious bird nest, the diameter Tinjong. There was medicinal fragrance currently wafting out from it. Sure how occupied the bird nest, hiding in a golden falcon's nest, currently stewing medicinal herbs. There were three crocodile dragons as well, and after their skin were flayed, they were tossed inside the medicinal soup. The medicinal herbs mixed with the meat fragrance, the smell a bit strange, but sure how couldn't be picky right now. His body's recovery was the most important, so no matter how bad it tasted, he still had to swallow it. This was a rare period of peace. It had already been two days since he fled from the centaur race, and during that time, he didn't stop for a moment, always escaping from attacks. When he arrived in this ridge, he unexpectedly found many medicinal herbs. He killed three true deity crocodile dragons, and then hurried to treat his injuries. I hope the heavenly deities come a bit later. Sure how sad. The medicinal herbs and crocodile dragon meat had finished stewing. He devoured it with large mouthfuls. Then, blood energy surged, completely covering him. He did everything he could to recover. One could see cracks covering his sparkling precious body one after another, cracks that unexpectedly stretched into the body's depths, reaching into his internal organs. Golden skin silver bones, whenever sure how operated his energy, there was this type of state. This was the embodiment of his flesh being cultivated to the peak of this cultivation realm. Unfortunately, even with golden skin silver bones, wounds covered his body like a net, about to break apart at any time. This time, he really was injured badly. He first suffered great Tao injuries from his isolation cultivation, and then he suffered from Jun Dao and Heavenly Country King's attacks, having both his frontal bone and heart pierced through. After that, he was even pursued by heavenly deities, continuously taking on serious injuries. If it was anyone else, they would have died a long time ago. Forget about lasting this long. Living more than an hour would already be a miracle. Two strands of immortal energy wrapped around him, pulling his broken body together, preventing it from truly breaking apart. Roiling blood energy surged. Things were changing for the better, but there was no way everything would immediately heal, as these were great Tao injuries. Even heavenly deities had a chance of dying from Tao injuries. No one was 100% sure that they could recover from these types of injuries. Even someone like Sure How with astonishing primordial spirit force, his flesh on decaying, cultivating two strands of immortal energy, still had to focus on recovering in order to make progress. Only after several dozen days would there be a chance of recovering. However, would those outside give him this opportunity? The answer was definitely no. Suddenly, he opened his eyes, immediately breaking open the sky to depart, leaving behind a streak of afterimages behind him, fleeing from this mountain range. Jie Jie. A disgusting laughter sounded. It was a golden creature as Zhang Tall, similar to a divine ape in appearance. Its entire body was covered in gold scales, and there was a snake tail. Its arms hung down to its knees, extremely long. This was an ancient ape that had the strong characteristics of the dragon, snake, and ape race. It was incredibly terrifying, a mutated creature left behind by the last great era. It was powerful and astonishing. This was especially the case due to the fact that it cultivated to the heavenly deity realm. Golden scales covered its body, making it impervious to sword or spear. Sure how had previously guided it into an ancient formation within some ruins, borrowing the endless sword Dao to hack at its body. Kung Chong sounds rang through the air, Sparks flew everywhere, but not a single golden scale came off. It was completely unharmed. Now, it chased over again, the situation not good. Sure how sighed. He used another realm shattering symbol. His inventory was truly getting smaller and smaller. However, if he didn't use it, how was he going to run from such a powerful heavenly deity? To burial realm. This was something he had decided on a long time ago. Now that he ate all of those old medicines, his condition improving again, he felt like he should take the risk. Xiao. When the realm shattering symbol was used, sure how appeared in an ancient realm. There were many opportunities here, previously containing an immortal Tao shrub, immortal bone, and other things. Sure how had previously discovered an immortal corpse, shocking all sides. Apart from this, there was a black abyss here that was a hundred thousand zhang deep. There were traces of immortal battles there, a branch left by the willow deity and Kuenpeng blood. 
There were damaged phoenix feathers, and even more so an ancient altar. At the bottom of the altar, there were too many mysteries. The Nine Dragons Pulling Coffin had previously traveled through this place, escaping, and a source energy cauldron wanted to come into this place, calling out towards Sherhal. He came to Burial Realm once again, but it was because he had no choice. This was the only place that could protect him from his surroundings. After putting on the tattered armor, he could enter the Black Abyss, while others couldn't. In the past, there were heavenly deities and sect masters from immortal ancients native races who entered this place, exploring deeply, but they disappeared forever after going down, all of them falling. As soon as Sherhal approached Burial City, he felt a feeling that made his hair stand on end. His two strands of immortal energy spun about, swirling around him, making him feel uneasy. Ever since he transcended the ancients and took that step, Sherhal's divine awareness became increasingly sharp, almost becoming a type of instinct, always able to detect incoming danger before it happened. He quickly backed off, decisively escaping. It was clear that someone had predicted that he would come here, standing guard here for a long time already, waiting for him to enter their trap. Heavenly deities have all lived for a long time, their experience is profound. A few people researched him, guessing that he would ultimately come here to seek shelter. Even though they didn't know that he had the Lightning Emperor's tattered armor, and this was why he didn't fear the Black Abyss, they could guess from the Willow Deity branch he brought back that he had something to rely on. As such, there were people waiting here ahead of time. Ping. A large hand slammed down rigidly, simply impossible to evade. Sure how activated the divine protecting symbol, making it shine, carrying out a defense. Kacha. The divine talisman developed a deep crack, being damaged quite a bit. Chi. Then, another streak of golden light shone in this direction, an ancient mirror suspended in the void. That was a heavenly deity magical artifact, and right now, it was used to lock him down. Not good. Sure how panicked. He was in an extremely dangerous situation, feeling even more uncomfortable than before. The ones who came made ample preparations, dead set on making him stay behind. Golden Ancient Elephant, Dragon Sparrow, and Horned Dragon appeared at the same time. Three great heavenly deities stood guard here, quietly waiting for him to come. There was nothing worse than this. With a honk sound, that golden trunk lashed over, its power tremendous, hacking the sky in half. Sure House Divine Protection Symbol erupted with an expanse of brilliant radiance, producing another streak. Meanwhile, that ancient elephant's preparations were ample. While holding the secret treasure, they retreated after a single strike, not allowing that divine symbol to retaliate. It was clear that they had long made plans to exhaust his precious symbol. Sure how's expression became cold. High and mighty heavenly deities, yet three came at once, attacking me from all sides. Do you all even want any face? Little Dao friend, where do these words stem from? We only wish to invite you as a guest to discuss Immortal Dao, said the Dragon Sparrow. Even things like you want to discuss the Immortal Dao? Sure how coldly berated. At this moment, Burial City's creatures were all alarmed. Heavenly deities descended, leaving many people shocked. This was especially the case when they heard what Shurhau said. Every single one of them were stunned. Even heavenly deities weren't significant in his eyes, not showing any respect. Huang really was confident and bold. Little friend, you really are quite brash, not even believing us to be worthy of discussing a mortal Tao with. Who else do you feel I can discuss Tao with you in this world then? The horned dragon said, carrying a smile. However, that type of contempt was clearly out of belief that everything was in the grasp of their hands. Cultivate two strands of immortal energy first before asking me to discuss the Tao. Otherwise, get lost. Sure how went for broke. Either way, there was no road of life left, no way for there to be any friendly relations, so what was there to be scared of? Junior, you are too arrogant. Just let your primordial spirit be erased and leave behind your body. The golden ancient elephant's face sank taking action once again. Sure how silently produced a sparkling white piece of bone, holding it in his palm. It was precisely the 10,000 spirit diagram. He felt like the divine protecting symbol might not be able to block more than a few dozen more strikes before being destroyed. This bone was sparkling and smooth, pure white like fine shade. It was a portion of the true primordial record, something that had previously displayed might in the lower realm, turning into a sky diagram producing 10,000 spirits. Its defensive strength was world-shocking. 
Only, he didn't know if it could still display its power this time. It was because no matter how he activated it, it was useless. It could only passively revive. E. Not good. Suddenly the golden ancient elephant cried out, its body contorting, face turning dark. At the same time, the horned dragon also trembled, its entire body swaying back and forth, about to fall out of the sky. The dragon sparrow even more so released a long cry, plume feathers igniting, doing everything it could to defend itself. This burial realm isn't a good place after all, not a place we can easily approach. The curse is activating ahead of time. We have to hurry and return. They were alarmed and angry, but they were also incredibly fearful. After leaving the tribe, once the amount of time was reached, there was danger to their lives. They had to hurry back, or else they would definitely die. This time exceeded their expectations. Burial Realm had too many strange things. Having immortals who died, the curse power left behind extremely strong. Pong. They were unwilling to let things in like this, working together to capture Sure Hal. Kacha. The divine protecting symbol became covered with more cracks. Pong. At the same time, in Burial City's Black Abyss, black mist surged into the sky. It was incomparably terrifying. Ah. The dragon sparrow cried out miserably, half its body festering, feathers falling out, almost falling head first onto the ground. It tore open the void, turning around to escape. Burial realm, damn place. The horned dragon was resentful. Dragon scales continuously fell off, its skin changing color. It also fled for its life. The golden ancient elephant was unwilling to let things in like this. Its gaze was extremely vicious as it stared at Shurhau. However, it couldn't stop the discoloration from appearing on its golden body. It released a long cry and then ran. Shurhau was stupefied. He put the 10,000 spirit diagram away. There was actually this type of thing that happened. He quickly flew out from the black abyss. When he arrived here, he couldn't help but suck in a cold breath of air. Black mist roiled outwards, making one feel cold. There was no way of approaching. In addition, he discovered a heavenly deity formation here that had previously been arranged by those three, waiting for him to rush in. There was no way of entering this place. It is most likely because they rashly arranged a formation here, triggering this type of chaos. Shurhau said to himself, Right now, the entire city was in great disorder, many immortal ancient natives screaming miserably, fleeing for their lives. The black mist was incredibly deadly against them. Many of them directly turned into pools of blood. Sure how didn't dare stay here for long either. He also ran. That day, a mortal valley was greatly shaken up. Burial realm was in chaos, three great heavenly deities suffering from curses, making everyone shocked. Many natives felt a chill run down their backs. In addition, that very same day, all of the heavenly deities that left the tribe returned, going into hiding temporarily not daring to come out again. It was because when they calculated the time, they realized that their curse period was quickly arriving, needing to return to the tribe to neutralize it. Otherwise, they might very well die outside. Even though they did immediately return, they still had to pay a great price while resisting the curse and seclusion. This was the last time a mortal ancient was opened. When this era passed, no one knew what would happen in this ancient land. That was why some of the heavenly deities were going crazy. For example, the golden ancient elephant, horned dragon, and others believed that as long as there was a bit of hope, for example, the two strands of immortal energy able to neutralize the curse, then the risk to hunt down sure how was completely worth it. In a certain small world, within a mountain region, buildings could be seen everywhere. Upon closer inspection, they were made of bronze, their appearance ancient. The one at the center was incredibly magnificent, the style extraordinary. If there was a higher realm sect master here, they would definitely be shocked. This type of scenery was extremely similar to a mortal palace, just two alike. Your curses should have flared out. It's my turn to move out. In the bronze palace, a male got up. What was shocking was that when he walked out from the ancient palace, an elder in a distant Dao platform opened his eyes, his aura similar to his, even his appearance similar. Only, one was a heavenly deity, somewhat aged already, while the other was like a youth who had reached the consummate level of the divine flame realm. Strand of primordial spirit separated, seizing the body of an ancient freak, it seems like in the end, I, D. Kuen, still cannot let go of my ambitions. Even after staying behind in a mortal ancient, I still wish to prove myself, 
Using a young body to cultivate immortal energy, is it even worth the trouble? Two individuals, one old, one young, opened their mouths at the same time. This type of scene left one horrified. He was D. Kuin, previously immortal palace's most powerful inheritor, no opponents throughout all of the higher realms. All of his peers treated him like a sovereign, recognizing him to be number one in the world. Due to a few reasons, he stayed an immortal ancient, not leaving, cultivating to the heavenly deity realm. In addition, in a certain era, he sent out a streak of divine will, seizing the body of an ancient freak, obtained a second terrifying flesh shell. He had been suppressing the second flesh this entire time, not breaking through so as to allow it to compete against the geniuses who entered a mortal ancient from the outside world. Why am I even bothering with this? Perhaps I should change bodies and get revenge for Di Chong, obtain his enemy's body and use it for myself. His young body disappeared, while his old body also stood up. Treat injuries, break through, I need to transcend above. At this time, Sher Hao continuously operated bone texts to treat his injuries. He also frantically searched for medicinal herbs and continuously ate them. He had to break through during this period of peace, and then use the new power to protect himself. For the sake of recovering as quickly as possible, he took the initiative to attack, plundering from a few natives' auction houses. For example, the Golden Elephant, Horned Dragon, and auction houses managed by other clans were all robbed clean their loss is heavy. Unfortunately, he didn't find even a single stock of divine medicine. Even though holy medicines were effective, their effects were too slow. Then, he went into hiding again to treat his injuries. For this, he didn't hesitate to enter places even the natives were scared to approach, entering a few strange small worlds. Even though this was the case, he was still found, because there were always true deities looking around. The various divine birds, dragon hounds, and other creatures were all experts at tracking down targets. Dark Realm, a place where the curse was known to be extremely serious. This small world was extremely large, the number of races many, but all of them went mad, or to be more precise, suffered from curses that were too severe, making them lose wisdom, only having their primordial instincts left. Regardless of whether it was the heavenly deities or the normal creatures here, they all entered a mad state. Normally, they hid here without coming out, but once they were alarmed, they would erupt into activity. The reason Sher Hao chose to come here was precisely for the sake of withstanding those heavenly deities, making them feel restraining fear. However, in just half a day, there were people who found him. It was a youngster who wore a fine silver robe formed from interweaving snow and natural silk. The workmanship was exquisite, and he was handsome as well. His aura was high and lofty, exuding an unhurried type of temperament. You are that Huang? He calmly asked. Correct. And you are? Sure Hao replied. I am D. Kuen. The silver-robed male had his arms behind his back, speaking calmly. There was an indescribable type of style. His eyes were deep as they overlooked Sure Hao. Even though they were both young men, he clearly seemed a bit incompatible with this world as if a heavenly deity was standing there and looking down on Sher Hao, not regarding him as anyone important at all. However, his true cultivation was similar to Sher Hao's, not all that high and mighty. I killed someone called Di Chong, Sher Hao said. That's my descendant. Within his body flows a bit of immortal blood. Di Kuen said calmly. A race that has immortal blood flowing through it? Sher Hao sneered. Then, he looked at the person in front of him. Could it be an ancient freak who stayed behind an immortal ancient? Indeed, Di Chong is like myself. As a descendant of immortals, his bloodline is precious, but was actually killed by you. Di Kuen released a soft sight. Then, his expression became cold. He looked at Sher Hao and began to closely examine him, but there was a type of domineeringness. You can die now. Have your primordial spirit depart and leave behind the flesh body. You have the choice to take your own life. This type of speech truly was insolent, yet he spoke it so calmly, so normally, as if it was but a normal thing. Who do you think you are, even daring to say something like that to me? Sure how said coldly. Even though he was seriously injured and close to death, when facing someone at the same cultivation realm as himself, he didn't attach much importance to them at all. I can because I am D. Kuen. I was previously unmatched in my generation. D. Kuen calmly looked at him. D. Kuen? Never heard of him. What generation's Big Onion? Sure, how didn't pay it much attention. The other person was looking down on himself, 
so he also showed Di Kun to spies. Take action then, or else you won't have a chance. Di Kun swept out a glance, still keeping his hands behind his back. He was extremely indifferent, as if none of this was significant. Sure how didn't say another word, bringing out the everlasting immortal sword and hacking outwards. He also brandished his right fist, displaying the reincarnation profound mysteries as he rushed forward. Since the other party acted so brash, then he wouldn't show much kindness, quickly ending this battle so he could leave this place earlier. Something that left sure how shocked happened. Di Kun completely abandoned defense, also rushing towards him, only using his arm to block before him in a simple manner. Who? Under the reincarnation fist, Di Kun's arm not only began to age and decay, it then immediately exploded. Then, an entire half of his body was like this, a single encounter, and the left side of his body was smashed apart. In addition, the everlasting immortal sword swept out, hacking it at the waist, separating the two parts of his body. Blood splashed outwards. Everything happened too quickly, leaving one shocked. Someone as powerful as D. Kuen couldn't take a single hit. Suddenly, Sherhao's fine hair stood on end. From within that collapsed body, the frontal bone shone. A streak of primordial chaos flew out, in its hands a purple-colored little bell. With a small sway, his soul became unsteady, as if it was about to scatter. What was this? Sherhao was shocked. That little person wasn't tall, only the size of a fist. The purple gold bell was even more so less than two inches tall, held in the primordial spirit's hands. With a gentle sway, it was about to remove and destroy Sherhao's soul. It was incredibly terrifying. Soul sinking bell. Sherhao was shocked. His primordial spirit was in great pain. He immediately recalled a certain magical artifact that was extremely difficult to refine. Few people successfully created such a thing. Dikuan had a soul sinking bell. This was clearly a strange treasure that was definitely extraordinary. This should be a heavenly deity magical artifact. In addition, that small person released terrifying power, close to the heavenly deity realm, its primordial spirit power exuberant. Dikuan's body was the same cultivation realm as Sure House, but his primordial spirit was extremely terrifying. The flesh shell is nothing more than a leather bag, a means of transportation. Today, it's time to change hosts. Since that body was killed by you, I'll exchange it for your precious body then, Di Kuen said with contempt. Sure how understood now. No wonder he was so unflustered. Turns out he had this type of thing to rely on, his primordial spirit ridiculously powerful, launching this type of sudden attack. No matter who it was, they would suffer a loss. This was the same as a half-heavenly deity. He held a heavenly deity magical artifact, suddenly attacking Sure how catching him unprepared, making him suffer a loss, almost dying here. You aren't bad, cultivating two strands of immortal energy. This body is perfect without faults. I will properly take care of this, means of transportation, so you can go on your way at ease, Di Chung said. His soul sinking bell moved, making the space between Shurhao's brows crack. The primordial spirit within was about to scatter away, the situation already decided. It was a simple and direct attack, about to bear fruit. Pong. Suddenly, divine flames raged within Shurhao's head. Two strands of immortal energy wrapped around the primordial spirit as it rushed out, and then a powerful wave of primordial spirit force pervaded the air, one that wasn't weaker than Dikun's. What? Also close to heavenly deity level? Dikun was shocked. This was why he had confidence in himself, his primordial spirit close to the heavenly deity realm because his true body was a heavenly deity, easily nourishing this kind of primordial spirit. Sure how was like a phoenix reborn in flames. That primordial spirit released light, resisting the soul-sinking bell, and then it rushed out from the frontal bone. In that small person's hand was a sparkling white bone, the 10,000 spirit diagram. Dang. D. Kuen moved the purple gold bell again, wishing to erase Sure how's primordial spirit, using the heavenly deity magical artifact to attack. However, this time, it lost effectiveness. The 10,000 spirit diagram, after suffering an attack, finally revived. It surged with life energy, over 10,000 creatures appearing in the void, covering everything densely, roaring at the same time. 10,000 spirits, this name wasn't for nothing, and in reality, there were even more, all of them vivid and lifelike. There was even the sun, moon, and stars. 
They hung in the sky, mysterious and profound as they released chaotic mists. The bell fluctuations were stopped. Those sound waves came to a screeching stop before the 10,000 spirit diagram. However, this diagram didn't retaliate either, only stopping the bell waves. It was wrapped within primal chaos, becoming more and more mysterious, difficult to see through. Actually close to heavenly deity realm, cannot leave you alive, Dequin shouted. At the same time, a bronze palace appeared. An elder opened his eyes. He sensed something inwardly, able to share emotions with the other primordial spirit. He quickly walked out from the bronze palace, and then he tore apart the void, heading towards Dark Realm. In Dark Realm, Sherhow didn't know these things, but he wouldn't waste this opportunity. With the 10,000 spirit diagram in hand, he slapped the primordial spirit, using the sparkling white bone to deliver the most terrifying strike. Dang. Dikuan and the soul-sinking bell tried to block it, but it wasn't enough. When the 10,000 spirit diagram descended, this bell was blasted until it trembled and became dull. This bell had a spirit, and right now, it was an incredible fear. It shivered in fear before the 10,000 spirit diagram. The only fortunate thing was that the 10,000 spirit diagram never displayed its might. Only used by sure how like a brick, viciously smashing at Dikuan. Dang. Finally, the soul-sinking bell that lost effectiveness was struck flying. Sure how frantically beat D. Kuen, shouting, acting so arrogantly, but nothing more than this. What are you playing at? Hong. Under the smacks of the 10,000 spirit diagram, D. Kuen's primordial spirit almost scattered. With a pink sound, Sure how lifted the seriously injured D. Kuen with one go, and then he slapped with one hand, and then the other in quick succession, immediately making his mouth go crooked. Pai Pa sounds rang through the air. Ah. In the distance, a roar of anger sounded. D. Kuen's true body went crazy, simply unable to believe what was happening. Even though he didn't care about that primordial spirit, right now, he felt as if it was happening to his real body. In reality, he also sensed the feeling of being slapped in the face. Schwa. Sherhau's primordial spirit quickly returned, using his palm to seize that primordial spirit, continuing to beat it. The primordial spirit's large mouth was smacked with reincarnation power, already about to scatter. In the distance, the real D. Kuen was seeing stars, his rage burning ferociously. Terrifying energy rushed into the clouds in the sky. He quickly chased over. Sure how fled. He knew that this small world had many secrets, containing powerful curse power and other things. Not even heavenly deities were willing to set foot here. Race with immortal blood my ass just some brat that needs his face slapped. Sure how beat the primordial spirit while flying in retreat. Brat, I won't kill you, but have you lived for several tens of thousands of years. I am going to make it so that you wish for death but can't get it, suffer greatly for many, many years. D. Kuen's true body displayed his hatred, shouting from behind. There was a steep cliff up ahead. Beyond that was a lake that was pitch black like ink, the coldness seemingly able to freeze and shatter one's soul. There were several ruined palaces there right by the shore. After arriving here, forget about sure how, even D. Kuen's true body felt uncomfortable. His entire body felt like it was being cut by blades, his skin in pain. A wave of terrifying, baleful energy seeped into his bones. Chaos Mosquito Lake. D. Kuen shivered inwardly, quickly stopping himself. Sure how knew where he was heading. He had previously heard about it. All of his fine hair stood on end his skin also feeling like there were blunt blades pressed against him, slowly moving across, cold and painful. It was as if a prehistoric beast was in that lake, opening its large mouth, waiting for people to jump in. Youngster, aren't you going to keep running? Decoin sneered. Old thing, what are you being so arrogant for? Are you looking for a beating? Sure how saw Decoin's real body in the distance. After saying this, he picked up the primordial spirit in front of him, giving his mouth another beating. Hong. D. Kuen was so angry he felt as if his lungs exploded. He sent a palm slapping forward, simply angered until smoke was coming out from all seven orifices. He had lived for such a long time, but this was the first time someone beat his mouth. His entire body was shaking. Even though that was just a primordial spirit he separated from, the feeling was too clear, as if his true body was being beaten again and again. Old bastard, you still refuse to be obedient. Sure how quickly dodged, and then he lowered his head to look at that primordial spirit. Pai Pa sounds rang out again. 
and then another vicious beating was carried out. He then even more so threw it onto the ground, stepping on it more than ten times. In the end, with a punk sound, he directly kicked it into the lake. Ah, D. Kuan released a miserable cry. He held the space between his brows. That primordial spirit was badly damaged, and he felt a wave of pain as well. He wanted to sever the connection, but he also felt a bit unwilling. After all, he already cultivated it to that step, so if he could merge with it again, his strength would improve a step further. Sure, how was shocked. D. Kuan's primordial spirit fell into that large black lake, but even though it was seriously injured, it didn't die, still able to struggle. When he saw D. Kuan rush over murderously, he didn't even think twice, producing the 10,000 spirit diagram and then put on the tattered armor that seemed to be left behind by the Lightning Emperor, diving straight in. He grabbed D. Kuan's primordial spirit and then dove into the lake's depths. Ah, at the lakeshore, D. Kuan's true body clenched his teeth, severing his connection with the primordial spirit, a small puddle of blood trickling out from between his brows. Younger generation, I want to see how long you can stay inside the lake for, he said viciously. Suddenly, the lake water surged. Ruby-like mosquitoes flew out one after another, all of them a foot long. They covered heaven and earth, all directions rumbling with sounds as they clashed left and right. These mosquitoes all went mad, only having instincts left over. They lost their intelligence, but most of them had the cultivation of the divine flame realm, making this horde incredibly terrifying. When they flew out, they brought with them waves of curse power. D. Kuhn's expression changed, continuously taking steps backwards. Soon after, the sound of wings shaking sounded again. Several tens of thousands of mosquitoes rushed out from the lake surface, all of them a meter long. Their bodies were shining, all of them at the true deity realm. This group was even more vicious and sinister. Chi. Suddenly, a golden mosquito also rushed out, the aura even more terrifying, possessing heavenly deity fluctuations, shocking D. Kuan until he quickly backed up, cold sweat appearing on his forehead. Wing. A sharp sound was released. D. Kuan felt a chill run through his heart, blood shooting out, sucked away by a creature in the lake, making him tremble continuously. There were two mosquitoes releasing chaotic energy, not bigger than the size of a palm, but they were more powerful than all of the other mosquitoes. They emerged from the lake. For the sake of recovering as quickly as possible, he took the initiative to attack, plundering from a few natives' auction houses. For example, the Golden Elephant, Horned Dragon, and auction houses managed by other clans were all robbed clean, their losses heavy. Unfortunately, he didn't find even a single stock of divine medicine. Even though holy medicines were effective, their effects were too slow. Then, he went into hiding again to treat his injuries. For this, he didn't hesitate to enter places even the natives were scared to approach, entering a few strange small worlds. Even though this was the case, he was still found, because there were always true deities looking around. The various divine birds, dragon hounds, and other creatures were all experts at tracking down targets. Dark Realm, a place where the curse was known to be extremely serious. This small world was extremely large, the number of races many, but all of them went mad, or to be more precise, suffered from curses that were too severe, making them lose wisdom, only having their primordial instincts left. Regardless of whether it was the heavenly deities or the normal creatures here, they all entered a mad state. Normally, they hid here without coming out, but once they were alarmed, they would erupt into activity. The reason Sure Hao chose to come here was precisely for the sake of withstanding those heavenly deities, making them feel restraining fear. However, in just half a day, there were people who found him. It was a youngster who wore a fine silver robe formed from interweaving snow and natural silk. The workmanship was exquisite, and he was handsome as well. His aura was high and lofty, exuding an unhurried type of temperament. You are that Huang? He calmly asked. Correct. And you are? Sure how replied. I am D. Kuen. The silver-robed male had his arms behind his back, speaking calmly. There was an indescribable type of style. His eyes were deep as they overlooked Sure how. Even though they were both young men, he clearly seemed a bit incompatible with this world, as if a heavenly deity was standing there and looking down on Sure how, not regarding him as anyone important at all. However, his true cultivation was similar to Sure how's, not all that high and mighty. I killed someone called Di Chong, Shurha said. That's my descendant, 
Within his body flows a bit of immortal blood. Dekuin said calmly. A race that has immortal blood flowing through it? Sure how sneered. Then, he looked at the person in front of him. Could it be an ancient freak who stayed behind an immortal ancient? Indeed, Di Chong is like myself. As a descendant of immortals, his bloodline is precious, but was actually killed by you. Di Kuan released a soft sight. Then, his expression became cold. He looked at Sure Hao and began to closely examine him, but there was a type of domineeringness. You can die now. Have your primordial spirit depart and leave behind the flesh body. You have the choice to take your own life. This type of speech truly was insolent, yet he spoke it so calmly, so normally, as if it was but a normal thing. Who do you think you are, even daring to say something like that to me? Sure how said coldly. Even though he was seriously injured and close to death, when facing someone at the same cultivation realm as himself, he didn't attach much importance to them at all. I can because I am D. Kuen. I was previously unmatched in my generation. D. Kuen calmly looked at him. D. Kuen? Never heard of him. What generation's Big Onion? Sure how didn't pay it much attention. The other person was looking down on himself, so he also showed D. Kuen to spies. Take action then, or else you won't have a chance. D. Kuen swept out a glance, still keeping his hands behind his back. He was extremely indifferent, as if none of this was significant. Sure how didn't say another word, bringing out the everlasting immortal sword and hacking outwards. He also brandished his right fist displaying the reincarnation profound mysteries as he rushed forward. Since the other party acted so brash, then he wouldn't show much kindness, quickly ending this battle so he could leave this place earlier. Something that left sure how shocked happened. Dekuin completely abandoned defense, also rushing towards him, only using his arm to block before him in a simple manner. Pooh. Under the reincarnation fist, Dekuin's arm not only began to age and decay, it then immediately exploded. Then. An entire half of his body was like this, a single encounter, and the left side of his body was smashed apart. In addition, the everlasting immortal sword swept out, hacking it at the waist, separating the two parts of his body. Blood splashed outwards. Everything happened too quickly, leaving one shocked. Someone as powerful as D. Kuen couldn't take a single hit. Suddenly, Sherhouse fine hair stood on end. From within that collapsed body, the frontal bone shone. A streak of primordial chaos flew out, in its hands a purple-colored little bell. With a small sway, his soul became unsteady, as if it was about to scatter. What was this? Sure how was shocked. That little person wasn't tall, only the size of a fist. The purple gold bell was even more so less than two inches tall, held in the primordial spirit's hands. With a gentle sway, it was about to remove and destroy Sure how's soul. It was incredibly terrifying. Soul sinking bell. Sure how was shocked. His primordial spirit was in great pain. He immediately recalled a certain magical artifact that was extremely difficult to refine. Few people successfully created such a thing. Dikuan had a soul-sinking bell. This was clearly a strange treasure that was definitely extraordinary. This should be a heavenly deity magical artifact. In addition, that small person released terrifying power, close to the heavenly deity realm, its primordial spirit power exuberant. D. Kuen's body was the same cultivation realm as Sure House, but his primordial spirit was extremely terrifying. The flesh shell is nothing more than a leather bag, a means of transportation. Today, it's time to change hosts. Since that body was killed by you, I'll exchange it for your precious body then, D. Kuen said with contempt. Sure How understood now. No wonder he was so unflustered. Turns out he had this type of thing to rely on, his primordial spirit ridiculously powerful launching this type of sudden attack. No matter who it was, they would suffer a loss. This was the same as a half-heavenly deity. He held a heavenly deity magical artifact, suddenly attacking Sure How, catching him unprepared, making him suffer a loss, almost dying here. You aren't bad, cultivating two strands of immortal energy. This body is perfect without faults. I will properly take care of this, means of transportation, so you can go on your way at ease. D. Chung said. His soul sinking bell moved, making the space between Sure How's brows crack. The primordial spirit within was about to scatter away, the situation already decided. It was a simple and direct attack, about to bear fruit. Hong. Suddenly, divine flames raged within Sure How's head. Two strands of immortal energy wrapped around the primordial spirit as it rushed out, 
and then a powerful wave of primordial spirit force pervaded the air, one that wasn't weaker than Dekun's. What? Also close to heavenly deity level? Dekun was shocked. This was why he had confidence in himself, his primordial spirit close to the heavenly deity realm, because his true body was a heavenly deity, easily nourishing this kind of primordial spirit. Sure, how was like a phoenix reborn in flames? That primordial spirit released light, resisting the soul-sinking bell, and then it rushed out from the frontal bone. In that small person's hand was a sparkling white bone, the 10,000 spirit diagram. Dang. D. Kuen moved the purple gold bell again, wishing to erase Sure Hao's primordial spirit, using the heavenly deity magical artifact to attack. However, this time, it lost effectiveness. The 10,000 spirit diagram, after suffering an attack, finally revived. It surged with life energy, over 10,000 creatures appearing in the void, covering everything densely, roaring at the same time. 10,000 spirits, this name wasn't for nothing, and in reality, there were even more, all of them vivid and lifelike. There was even the sun, moon, and stars. They hung in the sky, mysterious and profound as they released chaotic mists. The bell fluctuations were stopped. Those sound waves came to a screeching stop before the 10,000 spirit diagram. However, this diagram didn't retaliate either, only stopping the bell waves. It was wrapped within primal chaos, becoming more and more mysterious, difficult to see through. Actually close to heavenly deity realm, cannot leave you alive. Dekuin shouted. At the same time, a bronze palace appeared. An elder opened his eyes. He sensed something inwardly, able to share emotions with the other primordial spirit. He quickly walked out from the bronze palace and then he tore apart the void, heading towards Dark Realm. In Dark Realm, sure how didn't know these things, but he wouldn't waste this opportunity. With the 10,000 spirit diagram in hand, he slapped the primordial spirit, using the sparkling white bone to deliver the most terrifying strike. Dang. Dekuan and the soul-sinking bell tried to block it, but it wasn't enough. When the 10,000 spirit diagram descended, this bell was blasted until it trembled and became dull. This bell had a spirit, and right now, it was an incredible fear. It shivered in fear before the 10,000 spirit diagram. The only fortunate thing was that the 10,000 spirit diagram never displayed its might. Only used by sure how like a brick, viciously smashing at Dekoin. Dang. Finally, the soul-sinking bell that lost effectiveness was struck flying. Sure how frantically beat Dekoin, shouting, acting so arrogantly, but nothing more than this. What are you playing at? Pong. Under the smacks of the 10,000 spirit diagram, D. Kuen's primordial spirit almost scattered. With a pink sound, Sure Hao lifted the seriously injured D. Kuen with one go, and then he slapped with one hand, and then the other in quick succession, immediately making his mouth go crooked. Pai Pa sounds rang through the air. Ah. In the distance, a roar of anger sounded. D. Kuen's true body went crazy, simply unable to believe what was happening. Even though he didn't care about that primordial spirit, right now, he felt as if it was happening to his real body. In reality, he also sensed the feeling of being slapped in the face. Schwa. Sure how's primordial spirit quickly returned, using his palm to seize that primordial spirit, continuing to beat it. The primordial spirit's large mouth was smacked with reincarnation power, already about to scatter. In the distance, the real D. Kuen was seeing stars, his rage burning ferociously. Terrifying energy rushed into the clouds in the sky. He quickly chased over. Sure how fled. He knew that this small world had many secrets, containing powerful curse power and other things. Not even heavenly deities were willing to set foot here. Race with immortal blood my ass, just some brat that needs his face slapped. Sure how beat the primordial spirit while flying in retreat. Brat, I won't kill you but have you lived for several tens of thousands of years. I am going to make it so that you wish for death but can't get it, suffer greatly for many, many years. D. Kuen's true body displayed his hatred, shouting from behind. There was a steep cliff up ahead. Beyond that was a lake that was pitch black like ink, the coldness seemingly able to freeze and shatter one's soul. There were several ruined palaces there right by the shore. After arriving here, forget about sure how, even D. Kuen's true body felt uncomfortable. His entire body felt like it was being cut by blades, his skin in pain. A wave of terrifying baleful energy seeped into his bones. Chaos Mosquito Lake. 
Di Kuan shivered inwardly, quickly stopping himself. Sure how knew where he was heading. He had previously heard about it. All of his fine hair stood on end, his skin also feeling like there were blunt blades pressed against him, slowly moving across, cold and painful. It was as if a prehistoric beast was in that lake, opening its large mouth, waiting for people to jump in. Youngster, aren't you going to keep running? Di Kuan sneered. Old thing, what are you being so arrogant for? Are you looking for a beating? Sure how saw D. Cohen's real body in the distance. After saying this, he picked up the primordial spirit in front of him, giving his mouth another beating. Hong. D. Cohen was so angry he felt as if his lungs exploded. He sent a palm slapping forward, simply angered until smoke was coming out from all seven orifices. He had lived for such a long time, but this was the first time someone beat his mouth. His entire body was shaking. Even though that was just a primordial spirit he separated from, the feeling was too clear, as if his true body was being beaten again and again. Old bastard, you still refuse to be obedient. Sure how quickly dodged, and then he lowered his head to look at that primordial spirit. Pai Pa sounds rang out again, and then another vicious beating was carried out. He then even more so threw it onto the ground, stepping on it more than ten times. In the end, with a punk sound, he directly kicked it into the lake. Ah, D. Kuan released a miserable cry. He held the space between his brows. That primordial spirit was badly damaged, and he felt a wave of pain as well. He wanted to sever the connection, but he also felt a bit unwilling. After all, he already cultivated it to that step, so if he could merge with it again, his strength would improve a step further. Sure how was shocked. D. Kuan's primordial spirit fell into that large black lake, but even though it was seriously injured, it didn't die still able to struggle. When he saw D. Kuan rush over murderously, he didn't even think twice, producing the 10,000 spirit diagram and then put on the tattered armor that seemed to be left behind by the Lightning Emperor, diving straight in. He grabbed D. Kuan's primordial spirit and then dove into the lake's depths. Ah, at the lakeshore, D. Kuan's true body clenched his teeth, severing his connection with the primordial spirit, a small puddle of blood trickling out from between his brows. Younger generation, I want to see how long you can stay inside the lake for, he said viciously. Suddenly, the lake water surged. Ruby-like mosquitoes flew out one after another, all of them a foot long. They covered heaven and earth, all directions rumbling with sounds as they clashed left and right. These mosquitoes all went mad, only having instincts left over. They lost their intelligence, but most of them had the cultivation of the divine flame realm, making this horde incredibly terrifying. When they flew out, they brought with them waves of curse power. D. Kuan's expression changed, continuously taking steps backwards. Soon after, the sound of wings shaking sounded again. Several tens of thousands of mosquitoes rushed out from the lake surface, all of them a meter long. Their bodies were shining, all of them at the true deity realm. This group was even more vicious and sinister. Chi. Suddenly, a golden mosquito also rushed out, the aura even more terrifying possessing heavenly deity fluctuations, shocking D. Kuan until he quickly backed up, cold sweat appearing on his forehead. Wing. A sharp sound was released. D. Kuan felt a chill run through his heart, blood shooting out, sucked away by a creature in the lake, making him tremble continuously. There were two mosquitoes releasing chaotic energy, not bigger than the size of a palm, but they were more powerful than all of the other mosquitoes. They emerged from the lake. At the bottom of the lake was a woman who looked like she was carved out of white jade. Her body was pure white and perfect, releasing a sparkling luster. Her figure was wonderful, curves rising and falling. She had blue hair that fell down to her waist. This was without a doubt a beautiful woman, an outstanding beauty, her appearance enough to topple countries. The clothes on her body had long become ruined, but there was still armor covering the crucial areas, unexpectedly forged from black immortal gold. Her large chest and other areas were all covered. The immortal armor flickered with dark light. Even after endless year, it still didn't decay. However, one could see that there were traces left on its surface, not corroded over time, but left behind after a heavy blow. It protected her chest, but the black immortal gold was damaged. One could imagine what kind of power that was. Sure how felt that this woman had existed for a long time. Even though her skin was snow white like jade, the black immortal gold flowed with an ancient aura. Could it be a female immortal? Great waves stirred within Shurahau's mind. 
The impression this woman left him with was too strange. Even though she was incomparably beautiful, she gave him a heart-alarming feeling. This was especially the case when he saw a skeleton a thousand zhang from the woman, snow white like jade. They were dragon bones. The skeleton was tin zhang long, the aura terrifying and astonishing, flesh already no longer existing. Two chaos ancient mosquitoes were resting on its surface, not moving at all. It really is a true dragon. Sure, how was shocked. That type of aura was extremely similar to what he sensed when he previously entered the Kuenping nest and immortal ancient's vicious nest. It was extremely powerful, making one tremble with reverence. The true dragon's remains were left behind here. What exactly happened? A devastatingly beautiful woman rested at the bottom of the lake, spotlessly white and beautiful. A dragon skeleton full of ancient meaning released terrifying energy, making one shiver inwardly with fear. When the two of these were combined, it truly was a strange scene. What kind of place is this? Why was there this type of scene? Sure how watched from the distance, not approaching this place. Emotions were stirring greatly within him, making it hard for him to calm down. This was too astonishing. Upon closer inspection, he had new discoveries. There was a dark red spot between that woman's brows that had previously been pierced through. Was this the reason for her fall? However, why was that body still releasing exuberant life energy, as if it was still alive? Could it be that she could still be revived? An exceptional beauty and a small half of dragon skeleton were resting at the bottom of the lake. What kind of event happened to create this result? It really made one develop fanciful thoughts. Were the two enemies fighting a bloody battle to the death, ultimately leading to this result? Or were they allies, the two killed by a common enemy? Surehow said quietly. It was difficult for him to deduce past events. He could only sigh with regret. Immortal Ancient was too terrifying. Even true dragons and immortals had enemies, times when there was danger to their life. What kind of era was that? It really made the blood of powerful individuals stir, longing greatly for it. He stared at those two chaos ancient mosquitoes, his eyes flickering with radiance. He gradually understood why they were so powerful. They were extraordinary when they were born in this pond and then they most likely ate the flesh that came off the true dragon. The two mosquitoes ate the true dragon's flesh. Just the thought alone made him feel like this was crazy. Otherwise, why would they be laying on the true dragon bones, turning it into their place of rest? One has to understand that even if a true dragon died, its flesh definitely wouldn't decay, able to maintain itself for a long time. Now, it disappeared, so it was easy for one to associate it with the ancient mosquitoes eating it. Surehow stared blankly, everything before his eyes exceeding his expectations. Was this the reason for the Chaos Mosquito Lake being so terrifying? It was clear that the two palm-sized ancient mosquitoes noticed him, but they didn't come over, instead flapping their wings and warning, releasing terrifying fluctuations. They only had their instincts left over. If they still had their intelligence, the consequences would be too horrible to contemplate. The 10,000 spirit diagram and mysterious flame within Shurhao's body left them with a deep impression, and that was why they didn't attack Shurhao. Shurhao withdrew, staying far away from the dragon skeleton and approaching the exceptional beauty. It was because the spiritual essence that made his body take a turn for the better originated from this place. Wisps of the energy scattered outwards. Shurhao approached it. At first, it was still fine, but when he got within Tin Zhang, a mysterious power directly blasted him flying, making him bleed from all seven apertures, his flesh splitting apart again. This type of power was too sudden, swirling about the woman, forming a domain, protecting her at the center. Her body carried a strange power. Even after endless time had passed, it still remained, and it was full of exuberant life spiritual essence, as if she was still sleeping. Sherhao wiped away the blood from the corners of his mouth, revealing a look of shock. No wonder the two ancient mosquitoes didn't eat her. There was actually this type of power. He sat down Tin Zhang away, starting to operate his internal energy to treat his injuries. Strand after strand of ripple-like fluctuations immediately moved from that woman's body, turning into multicolored light. Sure, how was like a desert that received sweet dew, his entire body obtaining nourishment. This type of power was extremely strange, carrying life vitality, extremely beneficial for him. It wasn't as powerful as divine medicines and other things, but he was still heading in a better direction, flesh replenished by mysterious spiritual essence. He moved his blood energy around to recover his injured body. Just like that, 
Many days passed. It had already been a month since he entered this great black lake. As time went on, his injuries slowly healed, recovering his vitality. Sparkling luster flowed all over his body like seven-colored divine glass. However, even though his flesh recovered, his great Tao injuries still remained, not immediately recovering. This was extremely difficult to recover from. Even if a heavenly deity suffered this type of damage, being greatly injured by the Tao, they might still die, not necessarily recover. Sure, Hao had two strands of immortal energy. Even though he felt that he could recover, he needed a lot of time. Just like that, he didn't move, his mind becoming clear. He used all of his vital energy to adjust his injured body, erasing the Tao injuries, wishing to recover as quickly as possible. Another month passed. The great Tao injuries finally displayed clear improvement, now 70-80% to 80 recovered. If it wasn't for this fairy's body releasing mysterious energy, it truly would have been troublesome. Sure how said to himself, even though in the end, he would still be able to recover, he would have to use up a lot more time. After the third month passed, Sher Hao completely recovered, his vital energy restored to its peak. Two strands of immortal energy moved around him. He felt more powerful than he had ever been before. The current him was standing at the very peak of his entire life, finally recovered. I wonder what the outside world is like, Sher Hao said quietly. He estimated that most people would mistaken him for being dead. He didn't leave, instead continuing to solidify his cultivation. This was a rarely obtained piece of safety, the ideal place of seclusion. Another month passed. Sure how second strand of immortal energy obtained the snow-white, jade-like woman's nourishment, unexpectedly becoming just like the first strand, reaching its peak. The immortal energy is already perfect, unable to be strengthened further unless a third strand of immortal energy is cultivated. When he thought of this, Sure how shook his head. He did everything he could to obtain these two strands of immortal energy. There were no other paths he could find. He resolutely tempered his body, raising his body and mind to their optimal levels, and then he prepared to incite heavenly tribulations. Perhaps a third strand of immortal energy might appear in the heavenly tribulation? He felt like trying to make it through a heavenly tribulation in an era without tribulations would definitely be incredibly terrifying. Perhaps a third strand of immortal energy might be produced. It was because he had previously absent-mindedly heard the white tortoise talk about it before. Only, this great era didn't have heavenly tribulation. If one forcefully tried to incur it, it would definitely be terrifying to the extreme, a single mistake resulting in the destruction of body and spirit, doomed to eternal damnation. Therefore, sure how didn't dare rashly go about it. He had to seriously prepare, making his body state transcend his limit. Heavenly tribulation varies from person to person. I already cultivated two strands of immortal energy, so the tribulation that descends will definitely be extremely terrifying. Who knows, it might be the most powerful lightning tribulation. Sure how trembled inwardly. He had previously heard that in the last great era, many heaven-warping geniuses died under the heavenly tribulation, unable to continue living. This was not a game, not something anyone could pass just because they wanted to. One had to carefully prepare oneself. Not only did he have to adjust his body, he also had to temper himself. In the following month, Sure Hao carried a self-oppressive cultivation. He removed the tattered armor related to the Lightning Emperor, and then sat at the bottom of the lake completely naked, resisting the black lake water that contained endless killing energy. This thing, don't tell me that it is the blood of a powerful creature from the last great era? Sure how felt like this black lake water should be an unmatched creature's blood. Its essence scattered, only leaving behind the rest, making one's flesh feel extremely uncomfortable, placing them in great pain. The mosquitoes could endure it because they were born from this liquid. In this month, Sure how continuously resisted the corrosion of this black liquid, being injured many times. In the end, he returned to the bottom of the lake, borrowing the spiritual essence released by the woman to recover from his injuries. In the blink of an eye, he had already spent six months in the Great Black Lake. Now, both his flesh and primordial spirit had adapted to the Great Black Lake, not fearing the corrosion any longer. One could see just how astonishing his improvements were. However, he still didn't try to face the tribulation, still continuing to prepare himself. He started to take the initiative to provoke those mosquitoes, of course. He didn't touch those golden heavenly deities or the chaos ancient mosquitoes. 
The true deity-level silver-colored mosquitoes were a meter in length. All of them threw themselves over, their mouth parts sharp, releasing sparks as they landed on his naked body. There were endless bugs, all of them attacking together. Sure, how received their attacks to temper his body. This was extremely miserable. Even though he was quite powerful, able to initially withstand it, in the end when he became weary, his flesh would be pierced through. Am I committing suicide by doing this? Sure, how clenched his teeth, enduring it. Each time he was seriously injured, he would always sink to the bottom of the lake, staying Tinjong from the exceptionally beautiful fairy to cultivate, silently sitting there, borrowing the spiritual essence she released to heal his injuries. I have to be a bit more tough on myself. Tin Crown King has that immortal Dao little tree, vicious nest male even occupied in immortal land. They all have great natural luck and accumulated for many eras, so I have to strengthen my foundation. The mosquitoes carried poison, and their mouth parts were sharp, inflicting great injuries on Shurhao's body. He was continuously injured, and then continuously recovered. Zheng. The needle-shaped mouth parts shone, piercing Shurhao's body. Divine light flickered, releasing Zheng Zheng cries, as if it struck down on steel. In the recent month of cultivation, he continuously used true deity realm mosquitoes to refine his body, tempering himself again and again. At first, his entire body was covered in injuries and his body broken into a terrible state, often having his essence blood flowing away. Later on, he gradually adapted to it, his body becoming more and more powerful and sturdy, his vital energy becoming incomparably abundant. Kacha. Later on, when the true deity-level mosquito's mouthparts landed on his body, a sheet of multicolored light would appear on his body, as if lightning was interweaving, making his precious body difficult to damage. It's enough. I should attempt the tribulation. I wonder what the outside world is like, if everyone forgot about me already. Sure how came out from seclusion, preparing to leave the Great Black Lake.